It's a cold and frosty morning here at the Harecastle Tunnel on the Trent and Mersey Canal. We are just about to make our passage from the West Midlands to the north. Here is the entrance to James Brindley's original tunnel which was begun in 1777. It's about a mile and a half long and it took 11 years to build. And it was fraught with problems because of water seeping in from the iron ore deposits around, which has turned the water this sort of orangey, blood-red colour, which adds to the sense of mystery. Fifty years later, the famous Scottish engineer Thomas Telford was brought in to construct a new Harecastle tunnel. At its peak, there were nearly 200 boats a day passing through the two tunnels working in tandem. But when subsidence started to affect this tunnel, it had to be closed down, and they introduced an electric boat. This electric boat could tow up to 30 boats at a time, so greatly increased the capacity. This is the entrance to Telford's Tunnel today, with its 1950s portal housing steel doors and an engine room above which powers fans pushing fresh air through the tunnel. It's not for the faint-hearted, this one. One and a half miles long, underground, slightly misty, very noisy with the fans. And the tunnel gets narrower and lower as we approach the centre. Just see a tiny little pinprick of light in the, at the end. But we're not even halfway through yet. We're only 800 metres in. Yeah, you can see some of those iron-rich waters pouring into the canal through these little magical side tunnels. We did it! We completed the Harecastle Tunnel and here we are at the Northern Portal after 2,926 yards. And right next to it is the old tunnel, James Brindley's tunnel, which was closed in 1914.